Hey guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming this morning. A couple headlines before we get into the meat of today's show. We were just talking about this guy yesterday. This is the star from Alien. And he was the guy holding the guy with the serpent coming out of his chest. And he just died. Now he was old. He was 81. But this is just weird. How is it that this just keeps happening? We're talking about things. And then a day or two later, a week later, something directly connected to what we were talking about manifests in this reality. So this guy was old. This guy was from Alien. And again, he was holding the guy down who the serpent was coming out of his chest. We just covered this yesterday. Weird times we're living in. Now, here's some other uh, breaking news. Down in Miami, apparently this plane crashed into a car. Look at this. Now, the plane took off. It's a small plane. And then it came down and crashed into a car. Let me zoom this in so you guys can see this. This is just nail-biting. There you can see it there. I, I paused it so you can see it there. But there it is. And watch this. And then ball of flames. Now amazingly, let's run that back again. Now amazingly, the two people in the car survived. Of course, the people in the plane died. But this is crazy. I mean, have you ever seen anything like this before? Wow. There's the car there, it looks like. So there whoa, but look at that. Look at the look at the top of the car. So hopefully the air I don't know if the airbags went off or not, but there's the car. And it's pretty smashed up. But anyway, they're in the hospital. Let's hope that they survive that. That was captured by a doorbell cam. So those are just a couple updates before we get into the meat of today's show. Now, make sure we're connected first. I, did, I made some changes to my microphone, so hopefully that's coming through okay. Hopefully you guys can hear it. But, um, wow, right? Okay, can, are you guys there? Can you hear me? Just give me a, a quick uh, thumbs up. Make sure that you guys can hear the show. And the mic's okay. So, we've been talking all about these twin births. And now it's hitting an all-time high. This is crazy. So here we go. This is actually the headlines over the last three or four days. Twin births at a record all-time high. And we had already talked about the possibility of this happening. So I'm not going to belabor the point. But again, it's manifesting in our reality. So I wanted to look into the Wonder Twins. Now, this is one of those things that just popped into my head. And of course, we know where that inspiration comes from. That's the Holy Spirit wanting to reveal all things that were hidden. And this is manifested out of the prophecies of the Bible. So I looked them up, and here's what I found. Now, this is baffling. All of the same themes that we had already uncovered about twins and spamdemics, it's repeated in the Wonder Twins. Now, to start, we're going to go one by one and break this down. They're called Zan and Jaina. And I thought to myself, okay, Jaina sounds like Janus. Janus is the two-faced twin god. That's probably why they named her Jaina, Janus. Now, according to history, they debuted in the Super Friends comic number seven, in 1977 so that's 777 but they were born on 11 6 now november 6 is the mirror that another pair of twins fell now they actually premiered on september 10th the day before Blind 11 in 1977 it was season 2 of the all new super friends hour in a story about the dangers of joyriding in an airplane. 
You can't make this up. So here, here it is. Here's the episode, September 10th. And the Warner Twins and Space Monkey Gleek have to teach some youngsters a lesson about the dangers of joyriding in an airplane. So, the listen to this. Now, this is actually, uh, what do they call this? Adult Swim. So, it's uh, the very last part of this, they actually uh, change it. They alter it. But I believe this is the original footage. This is the debut episode of the Wonder Twins. Watch. Wow, that's loud. Sorry. Old Zan is a champ when it... Our story begins at Pete's Ping Pong Parlor. Pete's Ping Pong Parlor. <laughs> Old Zan is a champ when it comes to ping pong. Old Zan is a champ when it comes to ping pong. Now, I've got to pause this many times, obviously. Um, it, because this is so rare, there's a reason why it's not posted anywhere. Because they probably don't want anyone to make the connection between the twins and a rogue airplane. So, we're going to play this through, but we're going to keep pausing it. Uh, make sure we're connected one more time. All right, there you guys are. You guys are starting to filter in here. The number of migrants at the U.S. Hold on, Mexico let me pause border that. continues to surge. We're going to cover that later. Activity nearly doubling in auto plays. So, we got it. Okay, so here, let's go back to this. This is crazy. So, he's playing ping pong, right? So, obviously, the ramifications of this go back to panspermia. And the comets ping-ponging across the universe, seeding the twins. Seeding the serpent seed line. Watch. <laughs> Looks like Gleek made the champ a chump. So, that's Jaina, that was Zan, and Gleek is the monkey. Another theme we've been talking about. The Planet of the Apes. Now, keep watching. Now, their pointed ears is was inspired, according to history, by Spock himself. And he was a known demon, the blue blood himself. Uh-oh, the team trouble alert! So they get a trouble alert, and the trouble alert says that there is two teens flying an airplane. Listen. It is faulty. The plane's radio is dead. The teen boys took a plane. Oh, the teen trouble alert. Metropolis airstrip calling the Wonder Twins. Two teen boys took a plane for a joyride. The Two teen boys. The engine is faulty. The plane's. The engine is faulty, and the plane. Radio is dead, and we can't warn them of the danger. We'll be right there. Time to put our balls to the wall and help. <laughs> I mean, can you believe this? This is. This was. Uh. Saturday morning, cartoons for children. Time to put our balls to the wall. Danger. We'll be right there. Time to put our balls to the wall and help those kids. Wonder now, of course, the, the Wonder Twins are Exorian shapeshifters. And guess what? They were born out of a spam dimmick. Let me show you that real quick. So, you know, I'm not making any of this up. And let's see. Here you go. Their parents died when they were still babies during a plague. Now, what does Exorian mean? Are you ready for this? Exorian means related to medicine. So, we are in the midst of a twin explosion, and the Wonder Twins seemed to foreshadow their plans. Here is the me name meaning of Exorian, which is where they were from. And as you can see here, the name means related to medicine. Like pharmakia, probably. The Greek origin. Now, let's get back into this. Powers so the Zan or I'm sorry, Zan can form any form of water. Jaina, Janice can form any animal. 
Now, think about this. Janus and Jambres were the twins that were in the Pharaoh's court that were turning objects into other objects. And in fact, here in the Wikipedia page, they say that Zan and Jaina are shapeshifters. What? A race of Exorian, which is related to medicine, shapeshifters. Let's keep going with this. So they transform and they go to try to help these teens. Slater by the coastal mountains. Hey there. There's the two teens, which is code for twin T O W E R S, right? A talking bird. A talking bird. So this is all original footage. And of course... I'm talking water! Oh, we're tripping, dude! <laughs> Jupiter's... So, there's the eagle. American eagle. It's all there. This is foreshadowing and pre-programming. Now the story goes even deeper. I wasn't expecting to find all this. I just simply thought, Oh, I'll look into it. There probably won't be any connections. And we'll move on to something else. But according to history, they were owned as slaves by a man named Dent Will. Here he is, right here. And he ran a circus. And he told them that they would not be free from him until they turned 20 years old. Well, big deal, Casey. What's the big deal with that? Uh, twins, 20 and 20, that's the year 2020. Now, it goes even more off the rails because a clown named Illick, this is him here, let me blow him up. This is Illick, and if you spell Illick's name backwards, it spells Killy. And this is their father figure or their mentor while they were imprisoned under Dentwill at the zoo. Here is the creepy clown, Illick. Now, we've done all kinds of clown um, comparisons to basically the president, how they were trying to depict him like he's basically the clown. He's the clown. And this goes back to the devil himself. He's the Joker, which is the Trump card. The Trump card is the Joker in the older decks. So there's all kinds of connections between Trump and the clown. So this is just getting really weird. Now, the monkey's name is Gleek. And couldn't really wrap my brain around what that might mean. I guess Gleek, uh, that's something we should do to each other when we were children. We would like spit on each other. I know it sounds weird, but this is what people did. You try to like activate your salivary glands and like Gleek on each other. This is what boys did. This is boy play, right? So, I know it sounds disgusting, but this is what boys do. And so, Gleek might have come out of that. I don't know how else you can... But this is all he would say is Gleek, Gleek, Gleek. Now, let's look into their lives. This is going to start playing again. Sorry. Let's look into their lives, because there's some weird stuff that happened in their lives. Now, this is all in here in this Wikipedia article, but I'm just going to read it to you. They have secret identities as Johan. Remember, Janice and Jambres. Johans was actually the name of one of the uh, Pharaoh, the Pharaoh's magicians, the shape-shifting magicians. So they take on these secret identities as Johan and Joanna Fleming, as you can see here. And they do this to basically disguise themselves. They wear blonde wigs. And later in life, during their fight with Jayla, Zan becomes an ice golem. A water monster. And a demonic looking whirlpool. While Jaina becomes a griffin, a werewolf, and a sea serpent. This is weird stuff, you guys. Very, very weird. So that's the update on the Wonder Twins. And of course, we have the serpent 
coming out of the chest once again. This is demon possession. We figured it out. That's what the serpent represents. It's demons hopping through bodies over time. And when they inhabit the body, they become the symbiote of the body. They take over the, the person, the clone, or whatever it is they're demon possessing. This is biblical because de uh, Jesus casts these demons out, out of people and into animals. and other, you know. So this is weird, right? So I wanted to give you guys that update on the Wonder Twins. Now, I grew up on the Super Friends, but understand that we were programmed. That's the whole point of this is programming. So let's go through some of these here. Here's the uh, Dent Will, the guy that imprisoned them till they were 20 and 20 years old. Here is the creepy clown who was their mentor. The shapeshifters, Zan and Jaina. Now, what else do we have in news this morning? Well, Mr. Bo Jiden himself opened his big mouth and he gave the green light for the immigrants to storm the border. And that they are, in fact, piling up on the border. I'm going to play this local news story for you, the one that keeps playing in the background by accident, so you guys can hear for yourself what's happening. Mexico border. The number of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border continues to surge, with activity nearly doubling in some Arizona sectors over the last month. Border Patrol is operating at full capacity, and Arizona border towns are demanding federal help. Team 12's Adriana Loya recently traveled to the border region on special assignment to see how they're handling this developing situation. It is the last challenge in the migrant journey north, the U.S.-Mexico border. And the number of people making that trip north on the rise. Areas like this. Vincent Deleski is Special Operations Supervisor for the Yuma Border Patrol sector. We've gone from uh, months where we were seeing 20 a day to now we're seeing uh, upwards to 450 a day. The Yuma sector covers 126 miles of the Arizona border. Duleski says unauthorized border crossing activity in this area is happening mainly as the sun sets. We're seeing groups of, of 10, 20, 30, all the way up to 100 coming through at a time. According to recently released data by Customs and Border Protection, the numbers jumped from January to February in the Yuma sector. The number of adults traveling alone saw a 256% increase. Migrant families went from about 560 to more than 1,700, and about 370 unaccompanied minors were apprehended crossing the border, compared to about 210 at the start of the year. Yuma Border Patrol says the influx of unauthorized border crossings is happening in areas like this, the five-mile stretch of Norman Defense meant to deter vehicles, but it's not stopping pedestrians. Uh, we're doing it, but uh, we're getting stretched thin. CVP said last week the number of encounters at the border has been rising since April 2020 due to ongoing violence, natural disasters, food insecurity, and poverty in the northern triangle countries of Central America. But Martin Salgado, who operates a migrant refugee shelter in San Luis, Rio Colorado, Sonora, where they serve meals and a bed to sleep in to recently deported people, says President Biden's election victory and his promise to reform immigration policy has fueled the surge. In una buena Salgado says many of the migrants he's helped were also misled by coyotes. Some who they say were told Biden's 100-day pause on deportations meant they would automatically get asylum, motivating many to make the long journey. When migrants are apprehended by Border Patrol, many are deported back to Mexico. Because of current policies, Cubans, Brazilians, Venezuelans, and accompanied minors are allowed to stay seeking asylum. We've had over a thousand people come through the Border Patrol and being released into Yuma uh, over this last month. A situation Yuma Mayor Douglas Nichols says put his community in a difficult spot. Oh, you the think? city currently doesn't have a shelter system set up for migrants, nor the capability to build one. And because of the pandemic, transportation options have been reduced. It's a big concern. We we don't want to continue in the way we are because it's, it's unsustainable. The Biden administration ordered FEMA to help migrant children in overcrowded shelters in Texas. Border leaders in Arizona hope they also get a helping hand. Mayor Nichols says federal officials will visit Yuma the following days. It's truly a federal issue. It needs a federal solution. 
not a human solution. He says without more resources, leaders can protect their own communities as well as migrants. With national unauthorized border crossings on the rise, the help needed soon. In Yuma, Adri so there you go. There's the update on what's going on on the border. Now understand that politicians know exactly what they're doing when they side with or against immigration policy. Bo knows, make no mistake, Bo Jiden knows that when he opposes Trump on immigration, that it gives the green light to immigrants to spill over and to come to the borders. He knows this. Obviously, you just heard the people in their own words telling you why they came. Okay, so why would he do that? Well, it's division politics. It's to increase chaos and to keep them separated. Much like a farmer corralling a, a, the herd into different uh, pens so that they're more manageable. So. Now Bo has a problem because he is now having to do exactly the same thing that Trump did, deport people. And in fact, if he keeps this up, telling people to come to the border, he's set to outpace Trump. Now, it's interesting because Obama deported more people than Trump. Can you believe that? So this politics thing is all smoke and mirrors. They're all doing it. And if he keeps stoking people to come here by saying, oh, we're going to do a freeze and a moratorium, then these people are going to continue to pile up at the border and spill across. Now, one thing that po that was positive that happened out of the Trump administration is that immigrants didn't even bother trying because they knew they would get stopped and turned around or deported. They're not going to spend whatever savings they have to hire a coyote to get them across if there's no chance to get across. So do you see how ridiculous this all is? Now, we talked on previous shows about how to stop immigration, and they all know how to do it. But they just magically stop short every single time. How do you stop immigration? You stop all the services when they get here, and you criminalize anybody who harbors them, or gives them jobs. If you were to say that now, none of them would bother trying to come here and this would all end tomorrow. But that's not what either side wants. What they want is to keep the problem unsolved because they can then weaponize that problem to get votes. They can keep us separated. Now, Texas sued and a lot of these people that are being deported are coming from Texas because Texas will not enforce the freeze that Biden put on deportations. So a lot of these numbers are coming out of there. So technically, Biden isn't deporting nearly as many people as Trump did. But through this, this freeze being not enforced, it is happening under his watch. So... As you saw, Yuma, Arizona is in crisis right now. They're begging the feds to intervene. The city is being overrun. And somewhere around 6,500 to 26,000 people have been deported in the first two months. They've been arguing about the actual numbers. But it's about half of what Trump was deporting. But they're still happening. Now... What is Bo Jiden going to do with all these illegals piling up at the border? I guess it remains to be seen. But I want you to notice how both sides intentionally fail to solve the problem. It's They always come up short. And again, this is a way to fuel votes in their favor by stirring up the division. And I'm really talking about, I'm not talking about their actions because people argue and they'll say, well, Trump tried to build the wall and Trump tried to stop them from getting benefits. And he did. I'm talking about the rhetoric. I'm talking about the speech that always seems to divide instead of bringing each side to the, to the table to solve the problem. That's what I'm talking about. 
Why not in this particular issue? If I was Trump, I'd say, hey, look, you guys, right and the left, this is a problem for all of us. Okay? We need to sit down and talk about we're going to solve this. this is a national security issue. You know, look, if you believe that there are people that want to harm this country, where do you think they're going to come from? This isn't about people's color, ethnicity. Can't we just sit down and come together and get this done? What if Trump came out like that? Uh, what fuel would the left have to speak against him? They wouldn't have much fuel at all because they would be like, wow, he's trying to be bipartisan. He really wants to solve this. And he can say, look, we don't have the resources. We need to take care of Americans first, right and left. How about pulling some statistics out about left-leaning people who are struggling in America? There's ways to pull the different sides together, but they never really want to because then they don't get the votes and the leverage. This is a hot-button issue. Make no mistake. So what else do we have in the, the headlines today? Well, let me make sure we're connected up first. Thanks, everybody, for showing up this morning. I'll let that catch up. We'll do a little Q&A after this, but thumbs up this video if you can. Um, let's get back into this last tab here. So, more double standard smoke and mirrors, CV-19 politics, right? I mean, this is crazy. So, people got their mandates lifted, their mask mandates, and so they start hanging out. They got their social distance mandates lifted in their in their state and then they're like oh cool wrong so we have the lady that was tackled in the in the bank in texas where the mask mandate was lifted but bank of america decided they're not going to listen to the lifting of the mandate and they're going to go with personal responsibility see how this works and many of you called it you're like this is a setup they're just pretending to open back up and you called it I was a little bit more hopeful, but you guys called it. So even if your state lifted their mask mandate and opened back up, the individual private businesses have decided they're just not going to honor that. They're going to just do what they were doing before and make you, make you wear a mask and make you social distance. And here's the latest. Hundreds arrested in Florida. Now, for, Florida is an interesting story because they never really fully shut down. They are probably the one state that did the least in terms of the spamdemic. And it's interesting because what's hiding in plain sight is they haven't had like, they haven't been overrun by CV-19, but yet they stayed open most of the time. So that's a big white elephant in the room. Okay, how do scientists explain that? A state that never really closed, but yet there are no surges in, in, in the disease, right? So here they arrested all these poor people out on spring break, trying to get a little sun. Everybody's so everybody's really uh, pale right now. Probably nobody's been outside really, and they're like, "We're gonna go get a tan." And nope, sorry, police in Miami Beach use pepper spray. Arrested a hundred people as a large spring break crowds gathered despite the pandemic. Revelers, all oh, you horrible revelers! Many reportedly unmasked. I mean, this is crazy. So, mixed messages, confused and confound. You never really know where you stand. This is where they want you. They want you on your heels so that they are in complete and total control. Oh, look at this. 4444. Four, four, four. Well, that's some coded numbers right there. There you got a 322, 4444. Four, four, four. Weird. So that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Let me see if we missed any of these tabs here. I think that's about it, you guys. That's the update. It's going here. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Weird times we live in. Okay. Wonder Twins, activate. Now, there was a weird, um, I guess it was, they were talking about Obama and his fist bumps, and they called it a fist jab. This was back during the Obama presidency. Isn't that weird? And here we are with jabs, almost more foreshadowing, because that's what Zan and Jaina did. They would fist bump. 
They had to touch to create that invisible thread that runs between twins in order to get their shape-shifting superpowers. Weird times, you guys. Twins of twins. Okay. You guys have any questions? Anything you guys want to talk about? Did I miss something? You can disagree. Just be nice. Some people are like, wow, hey. That was good that Trump was tough on border security. Notice the problem didn't get solved. Simply, this should be, basically what should happen is somebody needs to step forward and bring people together in terms of this border issue. And help them understand the problem. Someone said there's free radical scissors. South Park propaganda. Oh, that's another thing. Slayer says the fist bump. Yeah, that, that's more foreshadowing pre-programming. Not touching with your open hands. So they have elbow bumps and fist bumps so that you don't spread germs. So that's more Wonder Twins pre-programming. Morning, Hardy Har Har. Good morning, Lisa, Jade, Chris. All right. Dinkelsdorf says one day a week Bible study. Actually, you can have Bible study every single day if you want. Go on to Enter the Stars Reloaded, and every single one of those videos is a Bible study. And you can click on the. Um, you can also go in and type in the body code, and it's full of Bible studies. A thousand videos of Bible studies. So take it upon your own initiative and do the channel search if uh, you need more bi biblical interaction. Otherwise, we talk about the Bible every day, and we relate it to what's going on. Because we just talked to you about Janus and Jambres in the Pharaoh's court and how the twinning was something that is spilling over into our current reality. WandaVision. You know, I tried to start watching WandaVision. And I don't know. I just can't watch movies like that. But maybe I should give it another shot. Maybe you guys can uh, just direct me to certain episodes of WandaVision. I think it's a series, TV series. Just email me episodes that, that actually jumped out at you so I don't have to watch the whole series. Because I'm not a big comic fan. I don't know if you guys noticed that. I don't really like the comics. There you go, Marcy. Marcy studies the Bible every day alone. Amen to that. Okay. Check out Johnson & Johnson, says Chris. Yes, yeah, study to show yourself approved. Absolutely. You don't need somebody that help you study the Bible like you can do it on your own. All right. Don't watch TV. I agree 100%. It's all programming. And if you do watch TV, uh, make sure you know what you're watching and looking at so you don't get programmed. Oh, yeah, Dr. Savage is talking about the Crown Act. Natural hair. Yeah, we covered that. The Crown Act. I forgot to mention that it was called the Crown Act. But, yeah, it's about being able to have your natural hair. And Savage says it passed 33 to 0. And we did it. We did like, we spent a little bit of time on that on a couple shows ago. Talking about ethnic hair. And why would they? why would they need a law for that? And then we laughed a little bit because we're like, well, what if what if a white person wants to wear a mohawk? That's their ethnic hair. Could they get hired wearing that? And of course, the answer would be no. But look at the hypocrisy of that. Protecting people's ethnic hair or a mullet, for instance. So. Dark Seed versus Superman, says Joffrey. Okay, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 
I think we covered that, actually. It's been a while. Thanks, D-Truth. There's blue, seven grains. Germophobia is a mental illness. You're absolutely right. And they tapped right into that, didn't they, with this spamdemic? They basically unleashed an entire generation of germophobes, didn't they? And that's why they had to pick a germophobe president to kick this off. The, the president that didn't shake hands with people and used hand sanitizer. Uh, and then was linked up with Unilever and who else? The Koch brothers, which make a bunch of toilet paper. So weird times we're living in. Of course, Unilever made a ton of money throughout all this. So, okay, time bandits. Yeah, we. I think we decoded that, guys. I some of these movies I watch two and three times and decode at least twice with new eyes because we've learned so much over the years, right? So maybe it's time to take another look at Time Bandits, which is all about a giant and Jack and the Beanstalk. A lot of imagery with that. Okay. Yeah, um, teens are dealing with self-harm. And this is a sad fact and a sad reality. We talked about this happening all the way last year, we said this was going to happen. And here we are and it's happening. Because the world has changed. And so, that needs to be addressed. Return the map. I think that was a quote from Time Bandits, right? All right. Mork and Mindy. Yeah, I think we looked at that as well. Been a long time. Justice League is a four-hour movie, says Joffrey. It's very telling about present events. Wow, okay, maybe I'll take a look at that today. Oh, it's like a mini-series, Joffrey? Is that what it is? Yeah, Belinda, I feel sick for the children as well. It's horrible what they've had to go through with all of this. Blues Clues. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, my, my children grew up on that too. Thanks, Kev. Okay. Wow, teens taking their lives every week in Portland. Yep. And notice how the mainstream media does not talk about this because they don't want anything to stand in their way of total domination and control and forcing us all into this phenomenon, this spamdemic. And so they don't talk about it. You'll see local stories on it, but you're not going to see it in the mainstream media. You're not going to have them admit that there is a, because what happens is parents will lose it if they know this is happening on a wide scale if they lose their own child and that will cause people to say enough is enough right world war z yeah i think we covered that one brian pippen okay uh, i think i'm gonna Take off from here. I love each and every one of you. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Actually, we don't even have a show schedule for tomorrow yet. But I'm on some of the ideas that you guys gave me. So probably be on here tomorrow. I do have some videos that I'm going to edit together and put on the backup channel. Uh, and that will probably be uploading this afternoon or tonight. I love each and every one of you. Have a great day. Be saved if you haven't.